This lesson is going to provide a quick overview of the difference between making an XHR request and fetch. And the endpoint that we're going to be connecting to is randomuser.me forward slash API and then question mark results equal and then how many results you want to return back. So we're just going to go with 10 results. So let's go ahead and open up the editor. And I've just got a file called test. Create a new file called ajax.html. And then this can just be a blank HTML page that will connect to the JavaScript file where we're going to be making our Ajax request. So within head and then just give it a title. And I'll just call that Ajax. And we're not going to do any styling. We're just going to have a simple file here. Add in a couple buttons. Give the first one a class of BTN1. And so this will be the XHR request. And the second button, give it a label of fetch request and a class of a button too. So this will just be using JavaScript fetch. And then lastly, set the script file, connect to a source. And the for source is going to also be ajax.js. So it's going to be the file that we're going to be connecting to. So let's go ahead and we'll create that ajax.js file. So ajax.js, same directory, so that we're just simply linking to that file from the main ajax HTML file. So now we can look at connecting it with JavaScript. And this is the one that we're gonna actually run within the live server. So go ahead and select open live server, and you should see the page being output. Also open up the dev tools, so we can see the console content and we've got the two buttons and the console content. I'm going to make this minimize it fairly small. Also have the code here on the left hand side so that you can easily see what's going on within the browser. And going into Ajax. So first of all, let's uh, make connections to the first two, the first buttons so that we can access them. So using the query selector, we're going to select the element with a class of BTN1. And then we'll also do the same for button two. So button two. And then adding event listeners to these elements. So add event listener. And the event that we're listening for is going to be the click event. So we're passing in the event object. And we can have a function that's going to run here. Uh, so this one will be just doing the request. And that's going to be XHR. So we'll run a function for that and create the function request XHR. And we can pass in the event object. So whenever that button gets clicked, we're going to run that function. And whenever the second button gets clicked, then we're going to request. And this is going to request fetch. And we'll create a second function that can handle the fetch request when it gets invoked. And we're connecting to the same URL. So let's uh, set up the URL for that. And that's going to be the content coming from the random user endpoint. So that's going to be our base URL that we're going to be connecting to. So first, let's uh, do this with the XHR request. So let's uh, create a new XHR object. And by using new, and that's XML HTTP request object that we're creating. So it's going to be referenced with the variable name of XHR. And then for XHR, we're going to listen for the ready state. And whenever the ready state changes, then we're going to invoke the anonymous function. And what this function will do is this will check the ready state. So right now, we'll just log out the current ready state. So we can take the XHR object and get the ready state value. And we're going to be looking for the ready state value of 4. So right now what's going to happen is it's going to change through all the different ready states. And then once we meet and hit ready state 4, then we know that we've got and a successful connection and that we're able to retrieve back the information. So let's uh, also open the object and we're using the get method. And the URL is going to be the base URL that we've got for the random user. So using that in order to retrieve back that object information. 
And then lastly, in order to initiate it, we do have to send and use the send function in order to initiate it. So refresh the page, click the XHR, and we've got all of the ready states. So at this point, when we're hitting ready state four, then that's where we know that we've actually got access to the data. So the it's been complete and we've hit all of the ready states. So we're checking to see if it's ready state four. And we can also just to ensure that we do have a status value of 200, that means that we also have a successful connection to the server. So once we meet these criteria, then we're ready to interact with the data and the data is coming back as response text. So for now, what we can do is we'll take the XHR object and get the response text and we'll output that into the console. So this is going to be returned back within a string format. So we've got this whole long string format that's coming here. And what we want to do is we want to parse it into a usable object. So let's uh, take one more step and take and set it as a variable called data. And using the JSON method, we're going to parse the response text as data and then we can use that as needed within our application and the results array is the results are actually contained within an array format so that's going to be contained within data results so let's try that one more time so now we've got an array and if we want to loop through the array so the data results we can use for each because this is going to be an array pull back the element and we can console log out each one of the elements that are within the results array. So that returns back them all as objects and then we can also use that and output it to the page. So let's create one more area here. I'll just create a div, give it a class of output and then within the JavaScript we're gonna select the element using the query selector, select the element with a class of output. And this is where we can populate the information. Take one more look at what we've got for the output here. And as we launch this, we can, can add to the output element. So taking the output and uh, inner HTML. So we're just gonna add to the contents of that object. And using a template literal, so that's those back ticks that are to the left of the one key on the keyboard. And that allows us to bring in the content. So if we wanna bring in the element and let's uh, double check what the path is gonna be. So we're in results. We want to take the user information. So that's gonna be contained within name object and we've got the first and last. So, so looking at element and then name and then first. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten this. So we're gonna just take the person. So just call it PS and that will be the element name. So using that same object path, we're selecting it so that just shortens our path to get to the name. So we can do first, I wouldn't have to type in element name. We can just simply type in that value. And then also let's uh, do one for last. And we can also do one for the title as well. And then add to the end. And we can get rid of the console message. So let's see what that looks like. So now whenever we click the button, we're appending to the list. So we're continuously adding to the list the new items that have come in through that list. So once again, this is coming from the web application from this web URL. So we can also use fetch in order to request data from the endpoint. And fetch is a newer format for JavaScript. It's promise based. Uh, so you're gonna see more and more of fetch being used. And the syntax is a whole lot simpler. It's got some built-in methods that you can make use of, especially when you're connecting to a JSON data endpoint. Uh, so let's uh, set up the fetch request. 
And the fetch by default will use the get method. So same idea here, but by default it's using the get method. So we don't have to include any further uh, methods or any other parameters. If we are using the post, uh, then we can add in headers and there's a bunch of parameters that we can use with fetch. So once it makes a connection to the URL, then it's going to move on to the next part of the promise. And that's going to be where it's returning back the response data. And depending on how this data is coming back, it can be a number of different formats. So this is going to come back within a JSON format. So that's the response object. And I'm going to use the arrow functions. So we're simply going to be returning back the response object and doing a return on it. So that's going to move it to the next part of the promise where now this is going to be responded back. And because this is JSON, there's a special method that converts the JSON data into a JavaScript object within fetch. And that's just going to be by the JSON and the rounded brackets. So next up, uh, we're retrieving it back as data. And then from here, what we'll do right now is we'll just console log out the data. So we'll be roughly at the same point where we are here, where we've got the response text value. So let's see how fetch works. And we're returning back the results array. Uh, so this is the same point that we have here. And because this is going to be all the same going forward, what we can do is we can create a function that will add the text. So this will add in whatever the new object data is. And I can just call that data. And it can loop through the data results. And we can even shorten this as well. We can pass it in as the data results. So that will just, whenever it retrieves back the data results, it can output those into the output area. Uh, so let's also add that here where we've got the data results. And now we've got the two request methods. They're both connecting to the same function that's going to output the content onto the page. Let's refresh. Just make sure that they're both working. And they should both be working actually the same way. And so there we go. We've got ability to list out and connect to an endpoint. So one other uh, thing that I want to do before we conclude. So if uh, for whatever reason the endpoint isn't working, uh, we can also run with a local JSON file. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to create our user JSON file. So I'm saving it on the same folder directory as I've got my other files, my JavaScript files and my HTML file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the endpoint, just select everything from that endpoint and save it. So now instead of using the endpoint, and of course I'm going to always have the same data, uh, so that's one of the disadvantages, but this is another option in case uh, the random user isn't working. Uh, so you can create your own random user JSON file, and that will still work within the file. But as we can see, the data is always going to be the same because it's just pulling it in from this JSON file. So that's an alternative if for whatever reason you can't reach the endpoint uh, that you can always have the JSON file locally and make your XHR requests or your fetch requests to those local files as well.